Well, I'm making the stock now for uh, making the pegs. So this is a piece of uh, scrap cherry that I had laying around and uh, I milled it to slightly thicker I think about a 32nd thicker than a quarter inch and then I have uh, my small piece uh, ripping device here you can uh, tighten the screws to hold the piece in place but this one's so small so it goes up against the fence here and I got it set at a little more than a quarter inch <laughs> makes little quarter inch uh, strips there so I'll make a few of them so that uh, we can turn them down to a quarter inch so this is how uh, I make them round I made this uh, pencil sharpener device here years ago for uh, three quarter inch dolls and uh, all it is is a, a, a spoke shaped blade that I've got pretty sharp and then I drilled a quarter inch hole and uh, flared out the uh, edge of it here to start and then I have uh, whittled a little bit away from uh, the material and the front is a starter and I put the put it in the drill and then just turn it on the side here them smoother than what you would get out of a dollar plate. And uh, there's a micrometer here that's set at a quarter inch. So you can see they they fit in there. They're not perfect. But uh, for pegs they'll work just fine. So I've got a few more of them to do here. Two down and uh, I'll have enough peg stock then to to do the uh, table. Well after uh, making the dowel rods I uh, cut them up into one inch pieces here and uh, I'm going to drill some holes and come up here I'm drilling holes with a quarter inch uh, rad point bit and uh, so after I get them drilled Put a little, a little glue on the end. And then uh, drive them home. And that's it. So I got uh, 14 of them to do around the, the table and uh, then saw them off and uh, Pair them uh, flush. So I'm cleaning up the pegs today and I've got my flush cut saw. <coughs> it's got to mark this side up so there's no uh, uh, set of the teeth on the uh, back side. And uh, it cuts on the pull stroke. gets them pretty close and then uh, I use my favorite chisel here to pair off the what's left in the glue a little sanding and we're done getting my workout for today <laughs> flattening uh, one half of the top here This is this will.
will be cut off over on this side so we don't have to get it too, too flat here. And I can check it. I've got a straight edge here. And it looks pretty good right there. And they would be listening to these symphonies, and I would come in very angry and say, Turn that down, it's just too loud. <laughs> yeah. With a few kids into them. And it wasn't until. Pretty flat. So, as long as these two edges over here are flat, then I can uh, flatten the other side. Well, at this point, I wish I had an 18 inch joiner. But uh, I'm still trying to get one side of this thing flat. Now, it's, it's pretty flat across the board uh, the cup is out but it's got twist in it and uh, so this this is high and that's high and I flipped it over on the uh, well the workbench is pretty flat but I flipped it over on my table saw and scribed along the high sides here um, what I have to take off so there's some mark there that I gotta plane to so it's highest on the corner and of course then it feathers its way back into the, the middle. I'm using my jack thing here. And I always take more off the edge than I do as I go in of course. Watching by right line. And we got to get it to the point where it quits rocking, and then we can flatten the other side once we got a good flat surface. Oh, I'll turn the board around so I can work that corner. Being a lefty, I'm set up for left handed planing. One uh, board is flattened. I, uh, after I was done planing it and getting it uh, reasonably flat, I ran it through my wide belt sander, which is uh, 22 inches wide. And so that's how I, I uh, smoothed the other side once I got one side flat, which was this side here uh, with the hand planes. Then I ran it through uh, when it would sit flat on the bench without rocking then I ran it through the wide belt sander which took off the two high corners on this side and then eventually uh, it got nice and flat on both sides. Now it's not the dimension yet but uh, we're on our way. I gotta do the other one now. Well I've laid out the uh, square that the uh, top ends up being when it's uh, up and it's slightly larger although it'll get smaller after I put on the baby butt corners uh, the corners will actually come in about a half inch uh, on either uh, across the four corners there but uh, this would be the center of the table and I've got uh, 16 and 3 quarters the uh, plan calls for 16 and an eighth so it's a little bit longer but once you take the uh, baby butts off, then I think it'll uh, it'll be what it's expected to be. So um, I've got the top thickness to uh, 13 16 at the moment. Uh, the, again, the plan calls for three quarters of an inch. So, uh, but it's got to be sanded and everything. And 
and scrape so it, we'll get it very close. Well I thought I'd show you uh, how I cut the uh, angles on here rather than set up a uh, cross cut sled or make a cross cut sled on the table saw. I have this old uh, radial arm saw here that comes in handy from time to time and uh, since it has a swing and locks at 45 uh, it's pretty easy to set up here and are reasonably accurate so um, I was actually going to show you one of the cuts but it's a little bit late but essentially all I do is lower the saw into the, the groove after uh, setting it up and it doesn't go quite uh, the full 24 inches of travel you can see I extended the uh, arm years ago uh, when I was making a Bombay chest uh, and that works pretty well so I have a, about a 23 and a half inch cut uh, with this thing so it works pretty good so now I get a hand saw off the last inch or so and uh, get ready to put it together <laughs> 